makes me think about, um, you know, we're talking about decentralization of control. And my understanding of the scaling um, debate is that um, it's been locked up for three years, and a um, big part of it is because of a political deadlock. And Bitcoin has this checks and balances system within its network. And what we've seen is, say, centralization of mining, um, mining manufacturer, um, manufacturer, we've had this issue, issue where one player wants to block something like SegWit because of their own um, motive. So my question is, do you see that um, there's need for an on-chain governance system similar to, say, maybe Decred or, say, Tezos is introducing to break these deadlocks and, and centralization um, interest within the network um, being um, a danger point? That's, that's a great question. I think it's, it's dangerous to think that Bitcoin doesn't have a governance system. It does have a governance system, uh, which holds an election every 10 minutes. And um, that election is to decide the greatest difficulty valid chain on the blockchain. But also, as part of that, it's also the economic activity of all the nodes who choose that chain based on their validation rules and choose to do transaction on that chain. And that involves five constituencies of consensus. Miners, developers, wallets, exchanges, and merchants. Think of it as a four or five multi-sig. If you try to carve your own path away from the other constituencies of consensus, you get burned at a rate of about $50 million a day in terms of losses. So people can threaten and pretend and bluff and say they're going to go against consensus, but we know how consensus works, and what consensus does is it punishes those who step outside of consensus very severely, monetarily. It's a market-based system of incentives, and the disincentives are pretty huge. Bitcoin has a governance system. It's a governance system that, um, that motivates people to come to full consensus at very high levels, or maintain the status quo. So, what has Bitcoin done for three years while it has failed to scale? An enormous amount of innovation in new protocols, um, an understanding of how forks work much better, um, the development of payment channels, lightning networks, aggregated witness, soft forks, uh, user-activated soft forks, minor-activated soft forks, SpoonNet, SpoonNet 2, TumbleBit, and a whole bunch of other technologies that came out of frustration with the lack of resolution in the scaling debate. Um, but what it also did is it proved that no one person, not even a very rich person, or a person with a lot of uh, silicon hardware, or um, some of the people who are key in writing the software, can impose their will on everybody else. It is a system that resists takeover. The problem with the governance models we see with some of the other systems is that they're not tested at scale. And in order to test a system like that at scale, you have to put it in an adversarial situation. You have to have a big pot of money sitting in the middle of the table, and everybody around the table goes, "Whoa, I like that." You know, there's there's people in this world who think about things differently than perhaps I do. I don't know how many would agree with me here, but um, one of the things I love about Bitcoin is that it is a leaderless system. It is a system that has no one in charge. Now, some people go, leaderless system, cool. Human expression, autonomy, self-actualization, wow. And other people look at a leaderless system and go, oh, you mean there's a vacancy at the top? <laughs> Where can I send the job application? <laughs> And you very quickly see the human nature take over when people like that seek to position themselves as leaders of the leaderless system. It's always been a problem, especially with um, anarchist communities, which is you get all of the anarchists in a room and everybody goes, "Yeah, we're anarchist. Now let's elect a leader." <laughs> We really need to get organized. Okay, obviously, real anarchists don't do that, but they're few and far apart. So, 
Governance in systems like this is tricky. We know how to do centralized governance. We know how to do um, representative democracy. We know how to do elections. And these systems allow us to choose between a number of different governance models. You can have governance models that are almost purely mechanical, mathematical, um, unfeeling, hard rules, like Bitcoin does at the moment with proof of work. And you can have systems that are softer, that have more human representation. Some systems that people suggest are things like proof of stake, where you can vote based on the amount of money you have. Um, that has its own risks. It is not a perfect solution. Proof of stake systems have a tendency to make the already rich richer and massively increase the inequality between the top percentile and the bottom percentile. And not just the inequality of financial power, but the inequality of decision-making power that then becomes financial power, that then becomes decision-making power, that then becomes financial power. And, hey, look, we've recreated the old system again. Um, so I'm skeptical of these governance models. I kind of like status quo. I think we can make what we have work fine. We just have to be patient and have the long view perspective. This is going to happen over a period of 20 years, and over maybe longer. And over these two decades, the decisions we make today and the things we accept as participants in this community and the choices we each make in our personal lives and which wallets we run and who we support with our transactions will make a huge difference 20 years down the line. So let's see. I'd like to see more experimentation with things like Decred and Dash and other um, software platforms like that. And if they can do that little trick at a billion dollars, I'm interested. If they can do it at five billion dollars, I'm very interested. If they can do it at thirty billion dollars, I'm fascinated. But that's exactly how you test. You put a bigger and bigger pot of money in the center of the table and see how long before the long knives come out. And all of those hunky dory kumbaya communities descend into name calling very quickly when there's real stuff at stake. And I, this is human nature. One of the experiences I had was being in. A, has anybody here run a business with partners? Okay. Has anybody here run a business with partners that suddenly became very successful? Okay. What's the lesson you learn? The people you thought you knew change overnight. Suddenly, a lot of money at stake. And I had friends who I thought were friends, and there is a million dollars sitting on the table, and suddenly greed comes in. And the people you know transform overnight into people you don't even recognize. It's terrifying, and it happens to anyone. So governance systems work like that. Human nature is difficult to fight. And just because we change the way we do money doesn't mean we remove human nature. The fundamental problem with cryptocurrencies is the humans using them. <laughs> the system works perfectly on testnet. I don't know what you're asking for. <laughs>